Well, we're done with the rollback repairs for a little while, I hope. Um, I actually put that truck up for sale. It's not that I have a problem with the truck, because I think from where I'm at in the truck and what the truck is and what it does for me, uh, I'm okay keeping it. But on the other hand, I think like everything else, uh, I always put necessity in front of want. So if I don't have a rollback and I need a rollback, it might push me to take one of the three other rollback beds I have and put them on a truck and get it motivated. So I'm gonna try that approach and see if it works. But before I can do anything, I have that one trailer that I bought that uh, needed a bunch of work. I've been gathering up all my parts and I wanna bring it in here, but you know, I gotta get all this cleaned up. I don't normally do this by myself. I have my wife watching because there's not a lot of room on either side. Not to mention there's an argon bottle over there. We're going to take it nice and slow and easy. See if I can get it in here without hitting anything. That'll do. Let's get the chains off. If you ever want to find out how poorly your trailer is made, just try and level it one time. Uh, so I set the laser up and I set all my blocks and I took my story pole, which is nothing more than a graduation with one mark on it so we could hit all the same points. I shim that side, I shim the middle, and I shim the end so that I know there, that base is within a sixteenth of an inch and I'm okay with that. Uh, the problem is the trailer, um, the way it's built, they didn't take as much care as I am. You know, these are just bargain basement, throw it together trailers, obviously by the construction. So I'm not touching the rear, I'm not touching in the front. I've got a good quarter inch gap here. I'm sitting on the spot back there and I got about a three eighths gap back here. So the best I can do is just uh, take out enough shims in the middle until it touches those. It won't be right, but, you know, there's so much already welded in place that I'm not going to be able to take that bow out of it and make it right. So it is what it is. Do that and let's move on. All right, it is as good as we can get. So next thing we're going to do is start cutting off all the garbage that we don't want and making changes. Like all these light brackets on each corner. Uh, this is going, this is just a two inch ball. We're gonna go to a two and five sixteenths. I don't know if this will show up in camera, but this is way off here. Um, we're gonna cut that flat, put plate steel, and we're gonna use a different type of coupler. Ugh, every, the more you look at this, the more disgusted you are by the craftsmanship. You know, just uh, so frustrating. Anyways, let's get at it. That sure didn't take very much. Look at that. We broke through most of it. Hardly anything holding. All right, I got all that taken care of. I got the corner lights off. And as you notice here, there's only uh, screws in the deck and two cross members. That's it. And then at the very end, when we redo this, I'm gonna put them in every cross member. That'll help to keep the boards from breaking. Um, Probably what I'll do is uh, one cross member, I'll do two screws in each one, then I'll do one, then I'll do two, or who am I kidding? We all know that's crap. It's going to be two in every board. Well, shoot, that ain't so bad. I only broke two. This one right here, which was already broke on that side, and I end up breaking on that side. 
Uh, and down here, I broke one right over there, but all the rest of them are out. So now I need to get the old crap off the, the deck here. And then we're going to take all these bolts loose, drop the boards real quick. Oh, I numbered the boards too, so that I would know where they belong. Um, and then I referenced underneath the, the deck too, so I wouldn't forget where that is. All right, I did away with the knee knocker lights. Now I'm working on what I'm gonna put back here. These are nothing more than just some old lights I took off a truck that had a lift gate on it. Uh, they're two light boxes that have been welded together and they were welded, well, they were welded together in the face and then they were welded to the truck box on the outside of the overhead door. Uh, they never welded the back. So when I took it off, they just kind of spread kind of like this. They got a bunch of crap in between them. So what I'm doing is cleaning this all up, getting this in a straight plane right here, and I'm gonna weld the back of it together. Now the idea is to take these and put them right here. Actually, it's gonna be like that at the top. So we have the backup light down low. Um, we'll have to make provisions for a license plate up on the front somewhere by the fender, but we'll get to that. Cleaning this one up a little bit. When I was well, uh, using the cutting wheel to get this off the truck, I kind of got into the side here, and I wanted to clean it up a little bit. So the best kind I'm gonna get, I guess, I'm gonna get the flap disc now and just kind of roll this edge and clean it up, see if it looks any better. I don't want to have to build all that up. It's just pointless for what it is. So I'll get a flap disc on it and just kind of smooth it out. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so it isn't perfect, but uh, you know, it's an old junky box. Let's use what we got and make it work. Better than it was. Come out here to my scrap pile. These are just drop cuts from a fabrication shop. Stuff that's left over. I'll pick through it and see what I can find. Alright, so this is one piece that was in there. It's five and a half inches wide. That's kind of what I was looking for. Somewhere between five and a half and six is what I was after. Uh, it's just going to cover the back of this. Cover these holes. And we're going to weld all the way around on it, so. Check it and see if I'm close. Looks pretty close to me. That'll do. Okay, this side's done. Now I can move the other side. Do you think you have enough clamps on there? Holding there? I don't want it to move. I want it exactly where I want it when I tack it into place. Well, I don't think it's going to move. I guess we'll find out, won't we? I guess. I think that's going to be so much nicer having them lights way back up at the very back, especially with the backup lights. So the next thing we got to do is move on to the inner fenders. They are loose and like so many of them, you know, you load stuff on it, pushes on them and it breaks all the welds. So we're going to go through and resecure all that. So I'm going to take a, uh, a uh, cutting wheel and slide down in here and clean up back behind it and all this and get some clamps and see what we can do all right this side's done it's not my finest work but i definitely struggled i just couldn't get clean between the two um 
hindsight, I probably should have just cut the angle iron off and just taken the whole, because the only thing holding it was the angle iron. I should have just taken that angle iron loose, take the whole thing out, and just clean it all up real good and made this much easier on myself. Well, I've got it cleaned up. And I gotta tell you, I can't remember the last time I worked so hard to make something look so horrible. It is, I mean, it is what it is. It's just an old trailer, you know? Uh, hindsight, this is why I do stuff the way I do. I was gonna cut these fenders off and uh, just replace them, but I didn't wanna have to go through all the work <laughs> to cut them off, plus add the expense. The only thing holding on is this little bit here, a tack welt right there, and the same thing on the back. And I could have brand new fenders. Too late now. I'm ready to go back together, but whatever. Let's move on. I got a little bit of flap disc work to do in these areas. The grinding wheel doesn't get that real well, so I'll change over to a flap disc. And uh, then we'll see if we can get it in there a little better than they did. All right, I got this side all done. I ground out the welds that are holding the hangers and did them again, weld them back in. Um, this side's all done, that side's done, and this is gonna be next. You can see this, how crooked this is. And this offset, we're gonna fix that. Um, we're gonna fix that. I've already done it on this side over here, or I'm well, I'm working on it, I should say that. Um, I just filled that weld there and I cut this apart and got it back in the right plane, welded it back in. That's all done. Those hangers are done. So I'm just going to keep moving forward. I'm probably going to go take care of that next and that. And then we're going to come up here and work on the coupler. All right, I got this cut loose. Now I'm going to bring it back. I'll lay a weld on the top and then I'll come down here and clean the outside and then weld it. Next, I'm going around and grinding some of these bad welds out and seeing if I can improve on them. There's hardly anything there, and that's the very front of the trailer on the tongue. So I just grind it out, and then I'll lay another bead in there. You know, hopefully make it better. Um, I'm working on this. I got it filled in because it's a big open gap. I'm going to grind it flat, and I've got this one handled here too as well. So after a ton of measuring and checking and rechecking, uh, I've got the front cut off. And this is what we're going to use for a coupler, because all of our trucks are four-wheel drive diesels, mostly. Um, Brandon's trucks typically sit pretty high, and he'll probably use this trailer more than me. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, obviously, I can't, I can't do it like that, because it's not this isn't wide enough so we'll get a piece of plate steel and we're gonna fit it to this just a little bit wider and it'll drop down so it'll be the same height as this because we want to be able to weld it down both sides the bottom and the top and then we'll before we do anything we'll, before we weld this we'll drill these two holes so we can have a mechanical fastener as well but let me see what I can find. I gotta get this cleaned up ahead of time because I won't be able to clean this up after I put this plate in. So I won't be able to weld that nicely. These were sent to me by a friend of mine. Um, wants me to protect my hearing. And I must tell you, I have been using the crap out of them because I'm grinders and all this stuff is pretty loud. And this cancels out all of it. So I really appreciate these. Went out to my, that skid where I have a bunch of uh, drops just scrap steel and I found this piece of half inch plate and it's six inches wide it's 22 and 5 8 I believe long this is 11 and a half inches and I want to leave a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom so we have something good to weld to so we're gonna make the part that welds on here 12 and a half and I know it seems silly but I'm gonna cut it here I'm gonna cut it here because I have a purpose for this and this so Let's go take this over to the evolution saw, get it set up, and cut her down.
make it just a little bit too big. That's okay. That's okay. Cut it. That's what matters. I just flipped it over. Check that out. That's pretty neat. All right, so we're going to flip it over and finish off our cut. Pretty nice cut for having to flip it over. All right, so this is going to go here. Like so. I'm going to clean up the flat disc first and get it all ready to go. All right, I got that cleaned up in there. And it's tough to clean inside places like this. Um, so I use just a die grinder and a carbide bit. This one's seen better days. It's got some chunks missing out of it, but it cleans pretty well. Gives you a good surface to weld to. The nice thing is, you know, if I missed anything, once I flip it over, I should be able to get to it with this. I use that quite often for that. Works very well. Okay, now I'm gonna get that piece. I've got it all flat disc and ready to go. This is what I can't get to. I'm not worried about the other side right now. Uh, it's easier to clean it up on the, on the tongue here than it is laying flat. So what I wanna do is get this thing spaced side to side and make this easy. I want this to hang down a half inch past here. So I'm gonna put a, uh, well, a tab on here out of a piece of half inch material just on the one side that way because I know these two aren't in the same plane one's higher than the other so I'm gonna set it on one so that I can twist and get it just the way I want it that worked out pretty well so now I just need to burn it in I just don't know if I'm comfortable burning it in with that or if I should get the big welder out I mean this is still only channel so hmm. Let me think on that. Look how crooked that is. That's not this, that's this. I ignored that when I was me measuring to cut that. All right, next I need to make a mount for the jack. Now, I understand the, you know, the trailer's upside down, but just for mock-up, we're trying to figure out where I want to put it. And I was thinking I was gonna go as tight to the hitch as I could um, to leave this area open, but I think I'm gonna come back just, to, just about uh, an inch from here and plate this on the top and the bottom just make two matching plates and one plate will weld nuts to the bottom of i've got this this old uh scrap i think this is eighth inch plate might be a little heavier than eighth it feels heavy what is that three sixteenths maybe anyways i'm gonna make them out of this i can slice this down here and i can make two out of one of these all right, I've got it laid out here, and this is the hole for the jack. And that's got a little bit of play in it, but not much. So I think I'm going to try and cut the hole first um, before I cut it all out, you know, go through all the trouble, make it neat and clean, and see how it works. But I don't have an annual cutter that size. It needs to be two and a quarter, I believe. So I'm going to have to use a plasma cutter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make me a ring to go around. I'm going to take this right here and my plasma cutter has a step on it which is not very big um, so I'm gonna cut a real thin slice on this and it needs to be accurate so that it'll lay flat on here so um, we're gonna use the evolution saw I'm gonna cut that off just a sliver and make us a template and then I can run my plasma cutter around the outside we'll have to make a couple tabs you know so we can clamp it down so it doesn't move and you know for uh, alignment make sure we're right so let's get this cut all right I got my pipe in here one nice feature about this pipe adapter is if you're using pipe that is above the guide you're gonna cut tubing the pipe adapter is offset so you can flip this thing over or here flip it over and it brings those two centering jaws up higher that's a nice touch um, I've been using this saw an awful lot lately as you might be able to see and very very happy uh, I can't tell you enough good things about this saw let's get this cut
All right, we're gonna see if that'll work. That's that's about three eighths of an inch all the way around. I'm thinking my plasma cutter might that that might work. I don't know. We'll see. Well, the template size is right. It worked well. Um, my problem with this, the, the, the hole didn't turn out very well because uh, my air compressor, apparently the pressure switch is messing up and it had shut off. I thought it was all the way up to its maximum pressure. Well, it wasn't. It was uh, quite a bit lower, so I went to go cut this with the plasma. Uh, it wasn't cutting well, wasn't cutting uh, straight, so it wasn't cutting all the way through. So I uh, went up there and cleaned the contacts on my pressure switch and, and readjusted it. And it seems like it's okay now. The other sides did okay. I did these afterwards. The jack fits in the hole pretty decent. It'll be all right. So now we're just going to make another one. So this shows what I was talking about earlier about how this channel is higher than the other one. So in order to get this welded in, I'm going to have to uh, clamp this down pretty good. All right, I got that on. So next I need to get the hole drilled down in here. Oh, excuse me. I gotta get a hole drilled down in here to run my wiring. Actually, it's that one going down driver's side. So we're gonna come down from the seven pin from the truck. We'll come down into wiring junction box. Then my wiring's gonna come up in the top tube rail. So I've gotta get a hole down in there. What I'd like to do is cut the tube off and go in there and cut a nice rounded hole. That way it's not jagged or anything. I don't have to worry about my wiring getting chafed. Um, I don't think it's welded all that well to begin with, so yeah. I guess we'll keep, take the cutting wheel and uh, cut it apart. All right, so I cut a hole. I removed that tube and cut a hole, chase my wires through. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run wire to each side i'm gonna drill my holes and bring the wire out and i'll let it outside and tie a washer to it that won't go through the hole uh and do the same thing on either side that way i have a chase because this is the hardest part i don't want to have to fight that and once the trailer is flipped over i won't have gravity to work on my side so um I'll do it this way and then every time i pull a wire through i'll make sure to put a pull string with it so if i ever have to replace it i can uh do it fairly easy I'm talking like I'm gonna keep this thing <laughs> so I took a hole saw on a bit extender drill bit extender and I drilled a hole down in there I drilled it as big as I could so it would kind of keep it centered now we're running the fish tape all the way up to the front and we're hooking string on and pulling it back like that and tying a washer on it that won't come through that hole that way after it gets sandblasted and painted we can just hook onto it and pull our wire I got my adjustable hitch mocked up. This is quarter plate, this is half inch. And I, I just feel like that's just a little beyond the capabilities or pushing that to the max for that little yes welder. So I'm gonna get the big welder up here and burn this in. It's all ready to go. I've got it centered and where I want it top to bottom. I think that'll be all right. And you know, the reason for doing this is the fact that we tow with different trucks all the time. So I might buy a truck and need to tow something. Um, Brandon's trucks are full drive. He likes a higher truck. I like I don't like on the ground, but you know what I mean So I wanted to, this is the easiest way to adjust that and, and you don't have to mess with drop hitches and all that kind of stuff Just have one. I like that. So we're almost done here um, I was thinking about reinforcing in between these cross members here. These are just two by three by I don't know three sixteenths angle. I was gonna go right where this board crease is here that that joint and just go and tie all the cross members together with a piece in between them that would be right where our mini truck would would run where the the tractor would run through so you'd be effectively making the floor as one all the cross members you're tying them all together so they take the load and disperse it a little better but i don't have 
the steel that I want to do it, and I just don't know if I'm willing to go buy the steel. Um, I don't know if it's that important. It's still only a 7,000 pound GVW trailer. I know this is way overkill, but this is more of convenience, but it is what it is. So all this is back together. I've got some pull strings set up. I got a little bit of welding to finish right here where I cut the little knee knocker lights off and it, the weld broke off a piece or whatever you want to say. And then I got my pull strings in here. All that's done. So we're just about ready to flip this thing over. Every time I have to switch between the two machines, I have to unplug it from my cord, my power cord, and uh, then I lose my settings in, in the, uh, the Yes Welder, the 5-in-1. So this is what I have right now. And the reason I do it like this is because this cord is oversized for what we need, but uh, that cord is 50 feet long. I have a plug at the panel, and I plug it in, I take it wherever I need to. A lot of guys like to drop, you know, plugs wherever in their shop. It doesn't work well for me because sometimes I'm welding outside. I'm using plasma cutter outside. So I could have the plugs, but I like having this cord as well. So today what I'm going to do is we're going to cure this problem. We're going to do away with just the one plug, and we're going to make it to where we have several plugs on this cord. Now, I won't be able to use two machines at one time, but I can have two machines turned on so I won't lose the memory, and then I won't have to stop what I'm doing and flip back and forth. So as I'm not drawing the amperage on one, the other one will take it, it'll be just fine. Plus, like I said, this is an oversized cord for what we need, so is this, so is this. Everything's oversized. What I'm also gonna do is add a larger amperage plug on this cord for my other welder. So first thing I gotta do is we're gonna make us a plate to mount it to. So this is a piece of steel that was left over from something else that we were doing. And this was supposed to have been a stainless product, but obviously it's not. So um, first thing I'm going to do is cut this off. It's got a bend on the bottom. I don't think we're going to use that bend. I think we're going to leave it. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to look a little weird with the bend on one side, not the other. It would be nice to have a bend on either side, but work with what we got. fine all right let's go lay out the length that we want now because i didn't do that yet i want to start with a nice straight edge i was laying this out so i could cut off uh that that 90 on this side and i got to thinking that you know by this is only being eighth inch material and if i cut that back off it could start doing this as i you know drag it around so i think what i might do instead is uh just go ahead and leave that on there and leave it the full width I hit that with a flap disc and I wasn't going to prime it or paint it and I started to bolt the first box on and I'm just like whatever wait for it to dry while I was waiting for my paint to dry I went ahead and drilled the two holes in this half inch plate because I'm going to weld this channel here as well as use two bolts so I'll have the weld plus a mechanical connection my paint is dry and of course this is going to get scratched up just as soon as it hits the floor but it is what it is. So now I'm ready to mount my boxes, these boxes here, to this. But I'm coming in the back of the box and I don't want water intrusion. So what I've decided to do is take gasket adhesive, uh, RTV, and I'm going to go around each place where the bolt goes through and seal between the plate, the bolt, and the box all at one time. And I'm going to put it on the bottom side as well. So I'm putting all my plugs in, and I use my, you know, strippers, crimpers tool. If you have a pair of these and you ever wondered what the, these are, there, you see that says 10, 
and 440. Those holes in there are threaded and they're threaded for this. These are the screws that hold down the receptacles in the box. Well, sometimes they're too long. So you thread it in here. Get lined up in the right one there. Oops, did I go in the wrong one? 632. 632, there we go. All right, so you put it in the right hole and then bring the back wherever you want to trim it. And just squeeze and then what it does is as it pulls back out you're cleaning the threads so now the thread it'll thread right back in to the receptacle like you need it these are just a little too long and bottoming out there we go so now I've got all of them handled plates back on all right I've checked it all we have uh, 120 on each leg and uh, you know 120 from the hot to the ground and from the hot to the ground and 240 on each that's what I was expecting all right so now that's done and I want to handle I think I'm gonna drill a hole here and here and bring up a piece and make a handle to carry that because it's gonna be a little cumbersome so let's see what we can find to build that all right it's all done I just took some all thread Bend at a 90. We're gonna took airline, just slit the back side of it. It fits on there so tight, I don't think it'll ever come off. And it close, it covers enough of it. Got a little bit of a gap, but not bad. It'll be all right. Anyways, let's get back to welding. I'm getting the trailer flipped back over so it's right side up again. So I've got some some more welding to do, some changes, some additions, uh, you know, things like that. I want to do on the top side. I really want to push forward on this pretty quick because I'd like to get it out to sandblast and paint soon. Um, I've also got some other projects that blast and paint. So that's it for this one. We'll pick it up uh, part three next. So hope you guys enjoyed. We'll catch you on the next one. Oh, never mind. Eating my candy bar. <laughs>